Hello, and welcome to the Bankers Tech Talk video series, looking at all things fintech. You can watch all previous episodes on thebanker.com slash tech talks. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor of The Banker. And with me this week is Dr. David Washburn, who is CEO of Enchain, which is a UK-based uh, enterprise blockchain provider. David, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks very much for having me, Joy. So I know that Enchain has about 1,500 patents outstanding. You know, can you tell me a little bit about some of the trends that you're seeing within the banking and capital market space in terms of blockchain adoption? Absolutely. Thanks, Joy. Um, as you mentioned, Enchain has one of the largest research teams in the blockchain space, and we've developed a really robust intellectual property portfolio covering a number of applications that are relevant in banking and fintech. Uh, two key areas to discuss right now. Number one is the concept of digital identification. We think this is going to be a, a huge trend in the banking industry as uh, KYC or know your client onboarding processes become more digital. And we're really excited about some opportunities and trying to develop some interoperable digital KYC technologies. Secondly, um, the other area we're really interested in is the concept of advanced key management or digital key management. We think we've got some really innovative uh, applications there into the financial asset custody business. And we think there is the opportunity for that business to change dramatically over the next 10 years as a result. So can you tell me a little bit about how um, you know, blockchain is really unlocking value within banking and capital markets? Right, it's still very much early days uh, in, in terms of really changing the game for financial services as a result of blockchain technology. Um, the two areas that have been focused on early have been around settlements and digitization or tokenization of financial assets. On the settlement side, um, it's really been uh, focusing on trying to reduce error and increase certainty around settlements. If you can achieve that, you improve the velocity of money, and that really creates value in the banking industry around the settlement side. With respect to tokenization, uh, we think this is an absolutely massive opportunity. The early focuses have been around financial assets. Um, we think that there's opportunity to expand that to almost any type of asset class. The key there for that to become adopted by real business is finding a, a stable and secure platform to build this technology on. We think we've got that in the form of Bitcoin SV. And I know that Enchain um, has been talking to a lot of uh, central banks, uh, including the Swiss and the Norwegian Central Bank, really around the idea of the central bank digital currency. <clears throat> What would you say is sort of some of the challenges that are still outstanding in this arena? Enchain's in active discussions with several central banks and government agencies uh, around the world, really. The concept of a central bank digital currency or CBDC is one of those financial applications that's been covered most broadly in uh, mainstream media, and there's definitely a lot of work to be done there. Central banks really need to identify the problem they're trying to solve for. On one end of the spectrum, you've got retail, which is focused on payments. Key issues there are finding um, a technology platform that allows for near real time, um, fast and inexpensive payments. The opposite end of that spectrum is on the wholesale end. Um, there it's central banks that are trying to better understand the liquidity um, and balance sheet of the central banks and their corporate banking partners. We think we've got uh, ideal solutions to address problems at both ends of the spectrums for central banks uh, and government agencies broadly. Obviously, there's a lot of hype around the cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, um, but then also more recently, Facebook's Libra. You know, what do you think, um, is, what is it going to take to really be greater adoption of these kind of um, private, um, privately issued cryptocurrencies? So that's a great question. Um, I think ultimately there are two key nuances here. Uh, number one is whether the question is about trying to replace um, centrally issued currencies with a native Bitcoin or uh, other cryptocurrency. Personally, I think we're a long way off from that happening. Uh, there are a lot of barriers in place there. Central banks in particular don't want to lose control of monetary systems. And I think those are the key issues facing Libra, frankly, because they were starting to look like a, a reserve bank. Um, the other end of the, of the spectrum, which I think is a much higher probability, is where Bitcoin actually becomes the invisible rails to electronic commerce. And in that form, 
uh, individuals and businesses uh, will be doing things on Bitcoin without even knowing they're doing it. That's, I think, the, the much more likely uh, first shoe to drop, so to speak, in terms of adoption. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your insights, David. And thanks to our audience for listening. Thanks very much for having me, Joy.